yesterday I was talking to a friend of mine who is a teacher and I was very happy to hear how he's pushing for technology in the classroom and his school will be uh, going into a bring your own device uh, in the near future. And uh, he was talking to me about some ideas he had uh, that he thought maybe I could help with. And uh, I thought it was a pretty good idea what he, ha what he thought. You know, he wants to basically issue each of his students a little card, maybe like an ID card with a QR code on it that has their information. Uh, in this case, what I wrote here is basically it's just their name. It's a QR code that has their name. And when he comes around to collect homework or tests, Basically, the kid would lay their, their homework out, drop their ID on top of the paper, and he can take a picture with his tablet or cell phone and upload it to a server, and then it would read the QR code and organize the paperwork according to the QR code. I thought it was a pretty good idea. And in my mind, I started working through it and, you know, uploading files to a server, very simple. Uh, we have, I've done tutorials in the past on... Uh, uh, QR code generators and also uh, what we're using in this tutorial or this video uh, is ZBar tools, in this particular case ZBar image uh, that will read the QR code um, and then just organize it. Um, so real easy but at the same time if I was just to make it from scratch uh, it'd probably be pretty ugly so I quickly went to GitHub and checked, I just did you know you know, JavaScript, PHP, file upload. And this is one of the first ones that came up was this one we're looking at here, um, which very nicely look. It uses uh, Twitter Bootstrap, which most of you, if you've done any web development, are familiar with. It's very commonly used. Also free and open source made by the, the people over at Twitter. And it's, like I said, commonly used. If you surf the internet, you are utilizing it many times every day. Also uh, jQuery. Uh, which is also probably even more commonly used than Bootstrap uh, and great, great tool that I've done tutorials on and I love. Um, so that's all part of this uh, jQuery file upload and this is the demo. I download the files. Really, it's, it's, you can consider it overkill for what we're doing because it's got multiple different interfaces. It already has the code for the server side. It has PHP code, Python code, and, and well, right here, PHP, Python, Ruby on Rails, Java, uh, Node.js. So it already has all that set up. PHP is the default, which is great because that's what I like to use. So basically I got that. And then once the files are uploaded, want to make it look nice and be able to search through the files. So if you watched my video from uh, uh, a few tutorials back a week or so ago, I did a video on uh, H5A, which gives you a nice little file browser for your server in your web browser. So uh, obviously doing all this, uh, I mean, if I just wanted to write a basic bash script, could have done it in a couple of lines, wanted to make it a nice interface, uh, make it easy to use on both desktops and mobile devices. And luckily I didn't have to design anything because thanks to the open source community, there was already free and open source code out there for me to use that I had to just modify slightly. So basically I took his demo code, downloaded it from his website. And even though I said this seems like overkill, the file is still, or at least zipped up, uh, a little over 100 kilobytes. So even though it's overkill, it has a lot of features we're not going to use. There are features you can implement later on, and it still is minimal. Uh, so all you need is a web, uh, a web server and that runs PHP, so Apache with PHP. Anyone could take this uh, that has any basic knowledge of computing and basically set it up uh, in half an hour tops I would say um, if you're not that experienced with it it shouldn't take that much longer because basically uh, in this case I've already packaged it up into a package file and once you have Apache and PHP installed you download uncompress the file to a folder on your server and you should be ready to go in theory um, but let's look at what I've modified so this is their demo and like I said it has uh, different interfaces uh, and I just went with their basic plus UI and I removed I just went in and deleted all the code I don't need all the all the, the the toolbar up here the demo notes down here the toolbar there and I just left the basics okay so I've already taken uh, I drew up some papers put QR codes on them took some pictures with them uh, with a camera 
put them on my computer. So let's go ahead. Well, first off, let me click on, I added this button here, View Docs, which will bring you to the folder using the five uh, H5 AI. And you can see this folder is empty. There's nothing in there now. So I'll go back a page. I'll click Add Files. Here I'm in a folder called Student Work, where I have, what is it, five or six, six different papers that I've taken pictures of that have QR codes on them. And I'll click Open. It immediately gives you thumbnails here. And I can upload them one at a time. But I'm just going to click Start Upload. Uh, and these images I have are about two megabytes each. It'll take a second here for them to get going. Um, but if you're taking a picture with your cell phone camera, I'm pretty sure, and we'll do that here in this demonstration momentarily, it isn't going to be that big. So give it a second here. I do know that this takes a second. There we go. Doom, doom, doom. They're all uploaded. It gives you little thumbnail shots. Uh, you do have a delete button here, but in reality, most of these files don't exist anymore. Because uh, these screenshots, these little thumbnails, are from basically their PHP code uh, from this project, uh, the uh, jQuery file upload demo project, um, puts all the files in one folder. Well then, what I just, I just added one line of code into the PHP code that runs a bash script of mine, which I'll show you here in a moment, that basically reads through, if it finds a QR code, then it organizes it. So actually, if I flip over here, this is the bash code I wrote. Very, very simple. Looks like maybe 10 lines of code. 13 if you count the blank lines. So yeah, pretty much 10 lines of code. Basically what it does is it moves into the files folder, which is the temporary folder right now. And it searches all the files in there. Then it uses ZBar code or ZBar image. Uh, again, which I've done tutorials on in the past. And checks the image for a barcode. If it is successful, if it finds a barcode, it is going to rescan that image and put the text from the barcode, from the QR code, into a variable called name. Then it will make a directory, if it doesn't already exist, inside our permanent files directory based on that name. And then it will move the image there. So a lot of these images don't exist. If I refresh the page, you will see there'll be one left. And the reason for that is that the image just, it was kind of blurry. It couldn't read the barcode. It's going to happen occasionally. So I purposely did that one in there so that you can see. Um, I have made no way for you to manually move it other than logging into the server yourself, which if you have access to the server should be easy. You can delete it at this point if you'd like. But all the other, the five other images, if we click on view docs, brings us a folder that used to be empty and now has folders based on those ch children's names that we got from the QR code. So I can click on Sally here and we have Sally's images and I click here and there's her paperwork and remember it renamed this folder based on that QR code and there's the same one. This is her homework. I can close that and go up and I can go into Tom's file and I can do the same thing. Oh, there's his my story. Oh, he added stuff to his story. Oh, even more stuff to his story. Okay. So, very easy. And again, if you watch my tutorial on this H5 AI uh, code, um, which is, again, free, open source, available for you to use, uh, and makes life very easy. If you had a long list of children's names here, you can use this filter, and I can start type in Sally, and you can see it filtered down Sally. Again, there's only two names in here. It's not a big deal, but you can type the first name, last name, whatever, and it will search through and narrow down the files for you. Again, you can also change the size of the images. You can go a grid view, an icon view, all these different views here for you. So that's, the, that's, that's how the code works. Um, again, you can come in here. There's no way that I've set up for you to delete the files through the web interface, but you could sit down on a computer and log into the server and delete it. Now, let's have a look at that same program, the same interfaces with a mobile device and the camera on your mobile device. Okay, I've got my Android phone here. I've got uh, one of the paperworks, someone's test paper here with the QR code up in the corner. I printed the QR codes on the paper, but it'd be the same as throwing down a uh, ID badge with a QR code in it. I'm going to put the paper down here on my seat. And now, as you can see, the interface looks pretty much the same on here as it does on the screen. Just 
everything's more compact. And when I click the Add Files button, it gives me options. Here I have options for my camera, sound recorder, voice recorder, select music check, obviously those don't apply to this program. But we have camera, gallery, Google Drive, photos, and file manager. So if you already have the files stored on your phone or someplace like your Google Drive, you can upload them from there and have the script automatically organize them. I'm just going to choose camera, which brings up my default camera app. I'm going to point down the paper, make sure it focuses, and I will take a snapshot. Uh, at least with this camera application, it asks if I'm done or if I want to retake it. And if it's blurry, you can say retake and just point and shoot again. And then when you're done, you can click done. And you'll see it just like on the computer. It automatically adds a uh, little thumbnail there and it waits for you to click uh, either the start upload button up there, which uploads all the images you have. So you can take a picture a bunch and then upload them all at once. Or it might as well just click the blue button next to that particular image and it will upload it to the server. Once it's done uploading, which my camera seems to take pictures, uh, about 875 kilobytes, so a little less than half the size of the ones I had with the other camera. Uh, and at this point, I can click View Docs, and just like on the computer, I have a nice little uh, file manager interface here that I can click on and go to. Also, taking pictures with your phone automatically names them, at least with my phone, uh, with a date stamp. So, when you're uploading from whatever device, on the server the file is going to be called the same as it was on your device. So in this particular case, uh, they will all be time stamped. So as you can see, this interface works great on a full desktop screen, a large screen, or even a small screen like a cell phone device. Now, I also want to point out that altogether, looking for the code I wanted to use and getting it all set up took maybe an hour to an hour and a half from beginning to end to do all this. It was very simple to do thanks to the free and open source software community. Uh, to do this on my own would have taken a lot longer, but thanks to uh, the people over at jQuery, uh, Twitter Bootstrap, and the developers who worked on the uh, HT, um, I'm sorry, H5 AI and the jQuery file uploader made my life a lot easier, and that's one of the main reasons that we live in a free and open source community and try to avoid proprietary software uh, that doesn't really help us at all. Um, now some thoughts I want to bring up about uh, things that other things that could be done with this software, other thoughts I have. Uh, one is um, maybe putting two QR codes so the student could have an ID with a QR code on it that is their name, uh, but then when the teacher prints out uh, like tests or assignments that they're going to write on, at the, at the bottom they can print a QR code that has the name of that assignment and then you can rewrite this code adding basically one or two lines of code um, to find the student's name and if there's a second QR code to take that and name the file based on that so that all your files are named based on the project and then with the H5 AI you can use that filter button to search through a student's folder for a particular file. Um, other thoughts I've had is obviously this is a great idea that my friend had for particular instances but if you're going to be going to a uh, bring your own, devi bring your own device uh, to the school I would personally recommend as much as possible have all the work assignments be on that device. Um, understanding that he is an elementary school teacher, so they probably want the students doing a lot of writing to work on their handwriting. Uh, I know my handwriting's horrible, and I probably should have done some more writing when I was younger. But I would recommend whenever possible, you know, tests and assignments, questionnaires that you give to the students uh, all be done on the tablet so you don't have to take a picture because it is going to take time to go around, take a picture, upload, take a picture, upload, or even take a picture, take a picture, take a picture, and then upload all at once. Um, 
So I, I would recommend that. I understand it all depends on the particular project. And doing that is, is really relatively simple. People with no computer skills at all could easily create a test or a set of questions in Google Docs, make a form, and when students submit it, it goes right into a spreadsheet for the teacher to look at. Um, but if you have any computer skills, uh, I recommend making your own forms. Making HTML forms is relatively simple. There are free and open source uh, projects out there that do uh, quiz style applications. Um, and this will just avoid having paper and having to take pictures because the student just does it on their tablet or phone or whatever device and submits it and the teacher gets it and the teacher doesn't have to walk around and collect it. Um, so that's something to think about. Again, I think it's great that they're doing this bring your own device. Uh, I, I don't like when schools assign children devices because now you're forcing them to use a certain platform and as you know I hate Apple products I think it's wrong one of the reasons I'm homeschooling my kid is because I don't want them exposed to to teachers who will force them to use certain software um, whether it be uh, Microsoft or Apple or any type of proprietary software because we don't use that in my house and I want to teach that to my kid and so I plan on homeschooling for multiple reasons but that's one because uh, I would have lots of fights with teachers who would try to force proprietary software on my child which I think is just wrong on many levels uh, but to bring your own device is a great thing because children has ch a chance to choose they can choose an iPhone or iPad if they really want. They can choose an Android device, uh, a Firefox OS or Tenzin or one of the many other operating systems out there or even a, a tablet that, that runs something like Debian. Um, it's up to the child to make that decision or the parents of the child. Um, and nowadays, I mean, I was at Best Buy a few months ago and they had uh, little tablets for $50 and larger tablets for $75. My tablet is a $70 tablet before shipping. Uh, yes, it's not the best for gaming and stuff, but to fill out basic forms for school and a complete assignments that way uh, is great as long as the teachers are assigning software that is compatible with all platforms which they should be. Um, I would hate to see schools say you have to download this proprietary program and install it on your device to pass the class because that's just wrong again on, on many levels um, and uh, so I, I hope that uh, teachers educate themselves on free and open source software uh, and it'll just make the world a better place. Um, but make life a lot easier on all of us. So I thank you all for watching. Uh, if I remember, sometimes I forget, I will put a link in the description to a compressed file with all this. And, uh, and again, I threw this together real quick. It's working great on my system uh, and it should be easy to install. I'm not saying there aren't going to be bugs, um, but I tested, you know, different scenarios, file names with spaces and special characters, and so far I think I've wrote my portion of the script to work properly. So feel free to use it, but again, at your own risk. Uh, and uh, I appreciate comments and feedback. And I, as always, I hope you visit my site, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description. Uh, and I hope that you have a great day. Other videos to watch, be sure to click on them, enjoy them. Some of them are uh, stuff that we built on today, and uh, they are more tutorials where this was more just a demonstration. Also, one, another thought that I uh, didn't mention in my little final part there about um, other capabilities you could add to this would be obviously uh, not only organizing into folders, you could also send out email notifications or even send the actual file in an email depending on the student's name to certain email addresses. I mean, again, the possibilities are endless when you're in control of the source code and you can manipulate it and do whatever you want. There are no limitations that you would normally have with proprietary software. You can do whatever you want. So just thought I'd mention that uh, whatever you can think of can be done. You just have to figure out how. Be sure to watch some of the videos below. Thank you for watching. And again, I hope that you have a great day.